Hello crafty friends, this is Julia. Thank you so much for joining me for a brand new card making video. For this one I'm making an interactive birthday card and this is a magic iris uh, card that I made with a die from Lawn Fawn. And here you can see the cute little bees and as you open the magic iris you see the queen bee with a happy bee day. So I also added lots of shine on the little honeycombs. So if you would like to see how I made this, just keep on watching. I started off with ink blending my Magic Iris like background panel. This is actually an add-on to the Magic Iris die so that it's basically like a full cover plate for the front of your card. And I'm ink blending that with squeezed lemonade, dried marigold, saltwater taffy, and worn lipstick distress oxide ink. I wanted like a yellow orange pink fade and the worn lipstick is quite like warm toned so I thought those colors would look really really good together and this I believe is actually my first time using the saltwater taffy I haven't had it for that long and I was never really quite sure what to combine it with but it looks beautiful next to the worn lipstick just blending the colors back and forth on my little silicone mat so the background doesn't move around too much. And I also die cut the little arrow piece. And I'm making sure to lay it next to the ink blended panel because this will basically be a continuation of that panel and I want the inking to look continuous. Then I wanted to add some clouds to the background. So I'm using the cloud stencils from Lawn Fawn. This is like a, a two-part stencil. And I'm ink blending with uh, Lawn Fawn Yeti ink. It's, it's a white pigment ink, which isn't super opaque, but opaque enough to where you can see like a white outline of the clouds. You have to add quite a bit of it. It's, it's like a thick ink. Uh, so I let it dry for a little bit in between coats. Uh, so when I used the second stencil, I just let the first layer dry a little bit uh, just so that I wouldn't smudge the ink because it was on there kind of thick. But I really like the look of it, so it's definitely worth it. You do need to make sure that you really blend them out pretty well because it can kind of bunch up in the corners of the stencil. So I just made sure to be mindful of that. And now I'm also adding lots of splatters. I'm using the Fintech, or if you're in Europe, it's called Colero watercolors. The first one is Sterling Silver that I'm going to be using. And I I'm also use the pink one, which is, I think, um, rose quartz or something. And then I'm also adding some splatters with saltwater taffy and warm lipstick, just for a bit of sparkle and interest on the background. I die cut the Magic Iris Beehive add-on out of some marker paper and also out of just white plain cardstock just so I could layer it behind the colored panel because my marker paper isn't that thick. And I'm just using Copic markers to color this beehive in. I wanted like a brownish yellow that fades into a pretty light yellow. So I'm just adding my shading with YR24. Or two four. Just going over, I'm just using the stitching lines to guide me where I want the shading to be. Just flicking the color in from the side. Then I'm blending that out with uh, YR Y17. I'm sorry, I had to wait until I actually put it on the glass mat because I couldn't remember. <laughs> So Y17, which is more, which is a yellow, but it's more of an orange yellow, as you can see. And I'm blending that out with Y15. Just again, flicking in from the sides so I get a nice transition, making sure to keep some pretty big highlight areas. And Y13. Again, pulling in the color a bit further, making sure I have enough to have like a quite light yellow. Then Y11, and I'm just coloring over the highlight areas with Y11. Also going over basically the entire panel just to blend everything together. 
and I wanted the same shade of yellow on the like magic iris pieces, the little sausages. So I just ink blended those with twisted citron, uh, with squeezed lemonade, I'm sorry. And then I also added some squeezed lemonade, dried marigold, and a little bit of worn lipstick to the inside that's going to show when you open the magic iris because I wanted it to be sort of the same color as the beehive but just a little bit darker so it actually looks like you're looking inside the beehive. Just blending the colors back and forth and I realized that the yellow and the orange just weren't enough so I'm bringing in a little bit of the pink just so that it gives a nice color transition. Then I also ink blended the honeycombs uh, with squeezed lemonade and I'm just adding those in with liquid glue. I'm just adding the ink, uh, I'm just using the ink blended cover just to make sure that enough of the honeycomb would show once you open up the iris and I'm just moving the honeycomb a little bit further in the one on the left and just making sure that it's like a nice grouping all the way around. I'm not really worrying about the middle because that's where the queen bee and the little speech bubble will go but I wanted to make sure that there's like a little bit of honeycomb showing in all of the corners. With this one, you always wanna make sure that it's like glued down flat because otherwise it could get in the way of the magic iris. And I wanted to add like really sparkly, shiny insides into the honeycomb. So I'm using the Nouveau Crystal Glaze. I'm using my little weeding tool from Cricut just to get out any air bubbles and make sure it's all the way to the sides. And then I'm using my Lawn Fawn Prisma Glitter just all over. There you can see there's also a lot of glitter in the middle, but once it's dried, I was just able to brush that off and it just gave the most beautiful shine to those little honeycombs. Then I'm also using the same shades that I used for the um, beehive for my cute little bees. I'm starting with YR24. I'm blending that out with Y17 and I'm being mindful not to drag in the darker shades too much otherwise you kind of lose the detail. Then I'm going in with Y15 and these were just so quick to color because they're so tiny so that was nice. Y13 Just to blend that out, pulling in the color a little bit further, and then finally Y11. I decided to go one shade lighter than the Y11, so I'm bringing in the Y000 as well, just so that the bees are a little bit lighter. And for the crown, I'm using YR23, YR24. and Y06, Y04. To add a bit of shading to my speech bubble, I'm using BG02, BG01, just along the edges, then BG000 and BG000. And then I'm also adding the BG01 and the BG000 and quadruple zero to the wings of the bees so that they have like a nice sheen to them. And I really like this color combination for those. And I wanted to make those images pretty sparkly so I'm using the Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen in glitter gloss to add lots of shine to the wings and the speech bubble. I also die cut the branch and the flowers that come with the beehive add-on and I'm using E30 markers to color those in. I started with E37, then blending that out with E35, E33, making sure that there's plenty of highlight area, then E31, and finally E30. And I repeated that for the second branch as well. Then I die cut the little leaves and the, uh, that go with the flowers, and I'm blending those with Y11. YG17, uh, YG11, sorry. YG17 and YG13 and YG11. And I wanted the flowers to be like a pinkish white. So I'm just adding a little bit of R22 just around the edges 
uh, around the flower center so that I would have a little bit of pink showing for uh, underneath the white petals. And then I'm blending that out with R30. And I just used Y11 for the flowers of the centers of the flowers, just to add some shading there. As you can see up top, I just brought in one of the flower centers just to make sure how far out I need to pull the color. And to make sure if once the iris opens, that it's like a more seamless look and you don't look at white edges. I'm just using Y11 all around the inside pieces of the magic iris, just to make sure that when you look inside, it's all going to be this nice shade of yellow. Not being careful about it at all because you'll only see like the inside edge. Now let's move on to assemble the magic iris. You will need to die cut three ring pieces, three of those little sausage pieces and three stabilizers, as well as one handle. And you need to die cut the slits into one of the rings you're going to be using. This will be the bottom ring. Then you just slide the little feet of the sausage pieces into the openings, just like I'm doing here. And they will line up perfectly with the inside and the outside of the ring. And as you can see, they're kind of fiddly, they move around. So what I like to do, and which I'll be doing in just a second, I'll just pop them in. And then I'm using some poster tape just to keep them in place temporarily. That way when I add my glue dots, I don't really have to worry about them shifting at all. Because once you uh, adhere them down with the glue dots and they're not lined up correctly, it will mess up with how the um, iris is going to close for you. So just adding some poster tape, making sure they're lined up perfectly. And then we're ready to add our mini glue dots. It's really important that you use the mini glue dots uh, because those are basically what move your iris around. So I have the ones where you have the little transparency sheet, so those are super easy to add down. But you can also just use a little, I don't know, like a jewel picker or something like that, or a weeding tool, just to plop them down on the excess that are on those little sausages. It's really like X marks the spots and that's where you add three of those glue dots to each of the sausage pieces. And here you can see exactly how I added them onto all three of those X's. And this is basically what holds your magic iris, the, what makes the mechanism work. And then I'm just adding one of the plain rings just on top, making sure that's lined up well. And then I'm really pressing into those glue dots to make sure that the mechanism holds. We need to add our three stabilizers and the die that cuts the slits also adds some score lines to that ring. So you just line up, as you can see, the score line with the little stabilizer. Uh, you can use tape runner, you can use um, just double sided tape, whatever you prefer. I do like to use um, a combination of adhesives because this is basically what holds your mechanism together. So if you move it around a lot, you want to make sure that you use like a good strong adhesive. And then we flip the iris around, making sure one of the stabilizers is facing us. Doesn't matter which one. And then you add adhesive about halfway down the little handle. And then you just have that one facing you. And you want to make sure that the handle lines up with a curve of the inside of the ring. And it also creates a little V with a stabilizer, just like I'm pointing to. Uh, you don't want it to overlap the stabilizer because this is like your closed position for the uh, your open position for the magic iris. And then I'm just adding tape runner to the remaining stabilizers so I can close them down, making sure not to go too tight on the ring because you don't want to glue the mechanism shut. Then we need to add our third ring without any adhesive below. And then we just hug the stabilizers around. And as you can see, they do not go all the way to the inside of the ring. That will be too tight and you wouldn't be able to move. So having like a good two millimeters there is perfect. And you want to make sure that the mechanism closes nicely. And then we can move on to assembly of like the card. I'm adding the ink blended panel to the handle of the magic iris. And for this one, this comes with a cover plate die, and you just need to snap off, uh, snip off the like rounded part that you won't need for this one. 
And I also added in a little yellow arrow just to match with the rest of the colors. Then I'm adding Tay Bronner all over the front of the Magic Iris. And you want to adhere this to the panel in the closed position because otherwise you won't be able to line up the handle. Just making sure it lines up nicely with the outside edge. And then I'm just pressing down. I added lots of foam squares all around the panel, but you want to make sure that the handle can move freely and that there's no foam squares in the way. There we go. There you can see it still works. I always make sure just to try it uh, to see if anything is in the way. And then I'm just going to add tape on it just to the stabilizers, not to the rest of the Magic Iris, because that could glue your mechanism shut. And then I'm just adding it to a white stitched panel with the foam squares, making sure I line it up as straight as I possibly can by eyeballing it. Then I'm adding the beehive with liquid glue. Just making sure the opening lines up nicely. And like I said, this is like two layers of the beehive, just one plain white cardstock and the other one is the colored piece. And then I'm also adding the little banner, which is just so cute for a birthday. It's so tiny, but adorable. And then I'm adding the Happy Bee Day and the Queen Bee with liquid glue. You can't really use anything like dimensional adhesive because uh, the iris still needs to close over it, but you do have a little bit of wiggle room. So the layer of cardstock with the images adhered over top is absolutely no problem. Then I'm adding in the two branches and I added the one up top and the branch die has a sort of rounded edge on the uh, on the side. So I just snipped that off so that it looks like it's a continuous seam. Then I'm adding the little leaves to the branches and the flowers as well. I'm just adding those down with liquid glue. Just playing around with the placement a little bit. And then I want to figure out where I want to place my bees and the little like bee lines. Off camera, I just went ahead and heat embossed some of the bee lines and also the flying by to say a uh, little bee line uh, onto some vellum because I always think that gives a really nice look. I just heat embossed that in white. And now I'm just playing around with the placement of my cute little bees. And to make it easier for me to add them to the card, I'm just gluing the bee lines to the bees that I think would look cute with it. Just adding little swirls and squiggles so that they look like they just flew loop-de-loop, -loop, which I think is just so cute. And then I'm adding my bees. Um, for the small one, I didn't even bother adhering down the vellum. It's set totally fine, just in the middle. And for those ones, I used a tiny bit of, for the longer ones, just a tiny bit of liquid glue to add them down. And the adhesive was totally hidden by the heat embossing. And that finishes off my card for today. I had so much fun making this one. I think it's just such a fun birthday card. And as you know, I love interactive cards. So having the queen bee revealed in the middle saying happy bee day is just too cute. I also really love the glittery shine of the like honeycomb. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this one. I will be back soon with a brand new card making video and I do want to try a bit of a different format which is more like real time crafting. So please be sure to let me know if this is something you want to see. Also if you have any questions or suggestions feel free to reach out and until next time I hope you have an amazing day. Bye!